Dave, Hamden Motorsports, Dirt Car USA. I um, want to talk to you a little bit about setting caster camber by using my setup plates and my caster camber gauge. First thing I want to talk to you about is if you look, I know this photo is a little deceiving, but I've got the car in dynamic attitude. The, and what I mean by that is this is how the car is on the track at three quarters of the time around the racetrack or more. So the right front's down, the left rear's up, and <clears throat> we're using floor jacks. Very important. The front floor jack runs straight in line with the car. The left rear floor jack is running to where it's going straight across the car. Why that is important is depending on the J bar, this car's got a straight bar in it if you see it there, uh, depending on how the toe is in the four link bars, a lot of different determining factors. As the left rear chassis rises, it goes up, forward, and to the right. Everybody thinks the damn wheels move up and down and side to side faults. Now, what this is going to do is put the chassis into its true form of dynamics. And on the front, we're going to have the jack like this, because on the right front, when the chassis goes down, forward, and left. So that's going to take your chassis and it's going to actually move like this and make all your fixed points migrate because the chassis is moving. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the car in dynamic attitude to do camber. It's this simple. 12.3. We're going to put it right here on the plate. Please, please, and I know the brake rotor ain't on here, but don't put it on the brake rotor. After you run the rotors, it's not uncommon to see one to two degrees of taper in the brake rotor. So don't put camber check there put it right there on the plate caster get the car in dynamic attitude caster is at 3.6 degrees positive how you can tell it's positive is you see that little arrow up that means it is in a positive state also positive caster upper ball joint is behind lower ball joint for positive and as you can see the tilt in the spindle now <clears throat> what you got to be real careful is don't be if you got a strut front end don't over lengthen or shorten your strut rod to achieve your caster because that will really play with wheel location and either move the wheel further forward or further back in changing the handling characteristics of the car so you got to be careful with that and do it mainly with the upper A-frames. So, another thing that I like to do here with my gauges is imagine the brake rotor's on here. I'm sorry it's not, but we want to measure from the bottom of the caster gauge, front and back side, to your brake rotor, have that square, and have your wheel straight forward. That will be the best caster reading. Then you should also do that on the bottom to verify if the spindle is bent or anything else that could be going on. Now, bear with me here. <clears throat> when we get into doing our dirt late models, pavement late models, I've got an L bracket. I'll try to turn the phone around here. And you can see, and what that does is that takes and simply moves the caster gauge out and around the body bracing. If you got stock spindles without any braces welded on it, you will not need that. So I just wanted to make that video so you can see how to do it. And if you're looking down there, that was one that we were using for pin inclination. There's another video on just that. So very, very important. Another thing I like to do, get a reference point from here to the chassis, front and back. That way I know if my wheel, I can have my wheel square that way 
and I can start setting my toe off of the chassis and then we can use our toe hooks down here front and back to verify so just want to make that video thanks for following along if you want to get a hold of me right there thank you and have a good day